This video essay is about the Hololive VTuber Hatchmark, also known as Akae Hato, also known as Red Kun, also known as Red Heart, furthermore known as the Jams. I'm going to tell you why you should consider her a performance artist and why she might be one of the best performance artists of this era. First, let's acknowledge that Hatchmark's artwork is as much curation as it is creation. She is a skilled practitioner of intertextuality. She can take a song and by the fact that she is singing it, and the set that she is singing it in, transform its meaning to tell a narrative. In the traditions of Web 2.0, Hachima often takes art contributed by her fans and then recontextualizes it to express her own artistic ideas. An example of this would be the thumbnail for her November 13, 2020 stream, Akko Hato vs Hachima. Q&A, which depicts her avatar holding a second copy of her avatar in a pose mimicking Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan on November 16, 1581. The original depicts Ivan overcome with guilt from killing his son, while this depicts an episode of fratricide between Hachima and Akehato. Now, if I had a background in Marxist theory, I'm sure I could make much of Hachima's building of effigies of her CEO Yago, and then using explosives to destroy them. This performance was made more potent because at the time she was being harassed by a Chinese nationalist hate mob. Likewise, my knowledge of traditional Japanese culture is also immature, but I'm sure there are parallels that can be drawn between the wabi-sabi aesthetic of impermanence and Hachima's art, creating a transitory artwork which then will be destroyed. I am sure that much can be said from a sex positive feminist perspective of Hachima's infamous stream where she reviewed videos of her fans feet, an inversion of the typical direction of foot pictures between streamer and stream viewer. Likewise, there is much to examine from a biographical perspective about why a person who has experienced food neglect would perform a perverse parody of a cooking show. And can we speak of the perfect irony of her signature song containing the following lines? When the core of VTubing is that the experience is mediated by the VTuber rig that they use? I am doing a video essay about performance art, so I am contractually obliged to mention the Serbian grandmother of performance art, Maria Avranjevic. Hachima was also done similar endurance art performance. An example of this is a performance where she used a device to give herself an extremely painful electric shock red heart on stage. Of course, this performance wasn't to her normal ability, but what a perfect artistic demonstration of how we demand performers to be positive and upbeat despite the pain in their own lives. Hachima used this thumbnail for her November the 17th Minecraft stream. The thumbnail is the Great Tower of Babel by Peter Burgle the Elder. The destruction of the Tower of Babel is the archetypical depiction of a community being torn apart due to difference in language. Now one of the aspects of Hatchimer's fan base is that it is divided between English speaking and Japanese speaking audiences. Her chat varying between 50 and 60 percent non-Japanese. Hachima has expressed a concern on how to balance and not let down either group of fans. But the thumbnail wasn't just a cute illustration. Hachima is building the Tower of Babel in Minecraft, a symbolic act of defiance against a world where language has created divisions. Indeed, language is a frequent theme of a content. From English lessons that are comically wrong, to streams where she had prepared subtitles in advance, and other streams which were seemingly equally impossible to understand in both English and Japanese. On the 21st of January, Hachima performed a video titled Void Hachima, which marked the start of the Hachima Akehato arc. This stream was intriguing because it's the first example I have seen of Dadaist VTubing. It consisted of alternating scenes where Hachima typed onto the screen while Old Ang Zine was played badly on a recorder and a karaoke stream where every song was interrupted before completion. The text type was often contradictory. 
doing things like announcing that soon something important would be said, then after building it up through several announcements, announcing that the typist had decided to say nothing. It was a bizarre, self-contradictory stream, which was deeply engaging. I should explain the Dadaists now. The Dadaists were an art movement that came about in response to World War I and the Spanish flu pandemic. They saw a world full of horror and lacking in meaning, then they produced art that was equally nonsensical, twisted, distorted, and often self-contradictory. When the stream ended, Hachima wrote, show me Kanryo, a Japanese phrase that means proof complete. The chat responded to this with QED, an acronym for the Latin phrase quot et demonstratum, a phrase that in mathematical proofs indicates what the author set out to prove has been proven. Waifu Theory has made a wonderful series on the Hachima vs Akehato arc, which I have linked in the doobly-doo, so I'm not going to go over the same territory she has. Watch her videos, they're great. What I do want to talk about is how Hachima used VTubing streams as a way to create an engaging long-form narrative. From the success of her streams and the interest that it attracted, this is something that there is a great hunger for in the audience. However, because Hatchima's story covered challenging topics around mental health, it was judged unsuitable for YouTube. Unfortunately, the month-long series of videos that constitute this arc is no longer available and no conclusion to this story was made. I'm going to have to come back to this. Now, artists don't exist in a vacuum. And if we are talking about an artist, we should also examine the people they have gone on to influence. Hatchima's colleague in Hololive, Coco, has stated that it was through watching Hatchima's streams that Coco was inspired to take up VTube. There is a broad agreement within Hololive that Hatchima is one of the most creative members. However, this admiration isn't restricted just Hololive. The V Shoujo VTuber, Nanas, also lists Hatchima as an inspiration for her VTubing. While we are talking about V Shoujo, its CEO and the co-founder of Twitch, The Gun Run, has posted Hatchima fan content to Reddit, so it seems he is also a fan. As well as these people, there are numerous Hattons that Hatchima is inspired to create art, music, games and videos. A positive feedback loop has been created where Hatchima inspires her fans and her fans inspire Hatchima. So we come back to the cancellation of Hatchima's story. Hollow Life was worried that the dark themes in her story could be exploited by people who post Hollow Life. For CoverCorp, it is not just the risk that they could have their talent banned from YouTube. A substantial amount of Cover's income is from brand deals with other companies. Damage to Cover's reputation can harm its ability to make these deals. As an outside observer, it is easy to say that Cover should back its talent 100% no matter what they do. But we are not the people risking the livelihood of around 100 people. Art is often confronting. One of the values of good thoughtful art is it gives society a way of dealing with issues that are difficult to talk about and examine. The tricky question of dealing with such art is one that has been debated for the entirety of art's history. In theory, YouTube's content rules make allowances for artistic merit, but artists, judges and philosophers have struggled over what constitutes artistic merit. We don't have the technology to do this in an AI. In meat space, art galleries, museums, film festivals and art house cinemas have mitigated this problem. People go to such places to see art and expect some of it to be challenging. If a person complains that an art gallery is full of art, they look like fools. Also, these institutions have a huge amount of cultural capital, so being related to them improves your reputation rather than damaging it, even if the art content is disturbing. We have streaming sites that function extremely well for general audience content. We also have streaming sites that are quite good at serving erotic content for adults. What we don't have is streaming sites for content that is not suitable for a general audience but doesn't engage erotically. Currently streamers 
don't have a space intended for mature, thoughtful content. These events show that we desperately need such a site. We need a museum for VTubers, and Hatchema should be in that museum. Between me recording the main audio for this video essay, and me editing it, Hatchema has unprivated most of her law videos and given a conclusion to it. However, I th think that my main point still stands. Hatchema is a very creative artist and we ne still need a space for mature, non-erotic content.